quick break. I just want to say thank you for all the people around the world, Jamaica, Germany, um, Asia, Europe, South America. Thank you for listening to Leap of Hell. Thank you for the support. And remember, my book is out. You can find it on Barnes and Nobles and Amazon. It's called Parents Are Greatest Teachers. Thank you again for all the support. And now back to our episode. And this is your host, Alex Valgood, and this is Leap of Health. And today we have Arielle Morton. She's a doctor of physical therapy, <laughs> a neuroclinical specialist, certified yoga teacher, and certified pre and post natal coach and trauma for moms. So I love the whole combination of this all these uh, different um, techniques to actually coach someone through these really hard moments. So thank you, Ariel, for being here. Uh, good morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Alex. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And before we go into all this um, concept of pros, uh, prenatal and everything that you do, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to combine all these techniques to what you do now. Yeah, sure. So, um, I, so funny thing, right? Like I feel I'm going to lead here with what I was doing first. And that's kind of what led me into, um, what I do now, because part of what I found was once, you know, fast forward to where I am today, after having babies, I was struggling mm -hmm. with who I am. And I realized it's because I relied so heavily on all those labels of what I do and professionally. Um, and I think that in our society that that is very common, that mm -hmm. we are so, so prone to those labels of, you know, what you do, in fact, you know, in regards to who you are, that we almost lose sight of like, who we are, because we're so much more than all of those labels. Mm -hmm. um, but with that said, <laughs> I'm going to go back to those labels now. Um, so yeah, so I'm a physical therapist, I've been a physical therapist for over a decade now, love it. Um, love working with people. Um, I've worked in almost every area of physical therapy, every, um, you know, from home care to being in a hospital to rehab. Um, my longest stint was neuro rehab, which is how I um, ended up becoming a neuroclinical specialist. Um, absolutely love the work. Have always also then practiced yoga since high school. So I've been practicing yoga for <laughs> decades now. Um, and became a teacher, um, I guess about five or six years ago, I kind of took the plunge. It worked out with my schedule. Um, the thing that took me so long was with physical therapy, a lot of the trainings that I was finding, um, just weren't conducive to my schedule because I've always had to work weekends in some regard, like n whether it was like on a consistent basis or, you know, every so often type of thing. Um, so I found a program that worked with my schedule it was amazing. I wish I would have done it sooner if, if time allowed, um, but have been practicing for a while. And then more recently, um, was kind of steered more specifically towards women's health and um, getting my pre and postnatal certification. I do primarily at this time just work with um, postnatal or postpartum women as opposed to the you know pre-baby stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about what I do. I am a wife and a mother, and I struggled with infertility for four years before having my son. Um, it was something that I clearly I really wanted, <laughs> right? So I mean, I think you you go into motherhood generally wanting it, um, you know, for the most part, for most people. Um, and it was definitely something that I wasn't expecting to struggle with. And I did. Um, and I think when you, you know, having the professional background that I had, I always kind of knew the direction that I wanted to go. I knew in high school that I wanted to be a physical therapist. I knew the steps I needed to take. I was able to, you know, do the steps in order to achieve that. And with motherhood, that wasn't the case. And it was something that you, you don't really plan for that. And you expect, oh, this is, you know, it's a natural process. Things are supposed to flow easily. Um, and you, when you're younger, you're so worried about not becoming a mother at the wrong time. I'm like, right. here I am. <laughs> Such is life, right? 
Um, but after struggling for four years, I was blessed with finally having my son and had to do IVF again for my daughter. Um, what I was not expecting was because I, I did the prep work or whatever prep work I could do in the process, um, basically all the things from acupuncture to the medical aspect of it, um, it did, did a little bit of everything. Um, clearly it was something I was, again, aiming for and that I wanted, and then I was not expecting to be hit so hard afterwards, especially with my daughter with the postpartum depression. Um, and you know, you're saying to yourself, like, but you wanted this, like you asked for this, you really, really asked for this, you know, because you did all the work, you did all the injections, you did all the procedures. And then, you know, so there, there ended up being a lot of like guilt and shame on top of the mm -hmm. depression, you know, the depressing feelings that you're feeling with it. So it kind of snowballs and it's, I feel like it's something I probably should have been a little bit more prepared for because if you go through IVF, you are actually more likely to have postpartum depression than if you didn't. Um, why that is, it could, I mean, it could be for many different reasons. Um, but I think that there, a piece of it could be, you know, your expectations of it, that you're, again, expecting so much that you, you wanted this for so long and you have this vision in your head of what it's going to be like. And then that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. um, so that is really kind of what led me down this path of where I am today. Um, I always knew that with having kids, I wanted to change my career up to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, the neuro rehab lifestyle, while I loved it, was definitely not conducive for the family life that I wanted to create. So after my son, my first, I kind of shifted careers a little bit and um, you know, long story short, there was a ton of, a ton of factors that went into play with kind of what led me in that direction. Um, but I ended up doing per diem work like one day a week and it was kind of like the best of both worlds. And then after my daughter and with having two, again, it kind of just changed that up a little bit also with where life took us and you know, we're not in our permanent location. We're kind of in a, in a temporary, uh, living state right now for my husband, so I just didn't have the support network that we would have mm -hmm. had if we had stayed where we were. Um, so with all of that in mind and kind of going through the postpartum depression um, and the physical healing aspect, I realized that, you know, this is what I want to do. I don't want other moms, other women to go through what I did for as long. And I feel like if I can help them navigate it a, even a little bit quicker or even a little bit more smoothly than, mm -hmm. then that is exactly what I want to do. So, so here yeah. I am. <laughs> Yay. No, I think, you know, uh, sometimes as harsh as it sounds or feels at that time in your, in our journey, I think it gets us where we need to be. And uh, even though it's like, little bit of struggle there I think uh, you are where you need to be to really um, help all these women that are going through the same I think also our experience helps us so much to really you know be for other people where you were before so I think that's that's such an amazing work that you're doing and I felt too I think you touched in a really important point which is like when we think about babies, we're like, yes, everything good. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm going to get pregnant. I'm going to have the baby done. Yeah. Right. And then, and then that's it. But I feel like um, it's most common down what we think the postpartum depression. Uh, and even it could be for a little bit, or it could be like a really big thing in some women. So I think this is like a really uh, important topic to talk about. What are some of the uh, things that you coach women through or, or what's, do you have like a, a protocol that you, do you focus on the physical? Cause there's a lot of parts in this, right? There's the physical, yeah. the mental and emotional, everything. So how, how do you approach on your, on your coaching after having the baby? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to your first point before of like, you know, getting through the hard to be where you need to be. That's kind of how I view postpartum now, like the whole postpartum journey and 
you know, whether your postpartum journey is having postpartum depression or anxiety or, you know, quote, just the baby blues, um, there's this, this moment where you're going to feel a bit lost, a bit disconnected from yourself. And I think if you are willing to sit with it and go through that, then you really, postpartum really can be this great journey to, to find who you are and to reconnect with yourself on a deeper level that again, breaks away from those labels that you had put on yourself of either, you know, just, you know, being a mother using that label and your expectations around that, whether it was relying on what you did beforehand in your professional life. And now you have, you know, this length of time where you're home and you're not identifying in that role as much, Mm -hmm. um, that it really postpartum can be this great journey into that. Um, and then, so when I'm working with women, what I do is, as you mentioned, yeah, the physical and the mental emotional piece of it, because it's, it's all of it. And that was for me, my biggest struggle or one of my struggles with the postpartum period is that it's, it's very segmented and it's not looked at as like one whole collective Mm -hmm. thing that we need to, you know, move through or heal from or recover from. Uh, But when in in fact, we actually do need to (laughs) heal and and move through it. Um, There's, there is a physical piece, you know, your body clearly goes through changes. And that's, you know, the changes that you're carrying the baby during your pregnancy, and then how you're birthing your baby, whether it's vaginal or by, you know, from C-section, or if um, there's those pieces to it, but then there's also like, there's actual brain changes that happen in Mm -hmm. um, that transition from pregnancy into becoming a mother that we have to deal with. And then all of the emotional burden, and I say burden, but, you know, just the emotional aspects that come along with you know, adjusting to a new relationship and then adjusting to a new relationship with yourself. And it brings up a lot of, um, you know, past triggers that you're noticing when you're, you know, as you're feeling certain things. Um, So I do really try to kind of blend all of those pieces together. Uh, And I do it, you know, and kind of simplify it as best I can into like three, three um, ways of doing it. And so it's, identifying, it's integrating, and it's igniting. So we are first, you have to first identify the cause and we kind of the cause of what you're feeling, identify where you are and identify who you are. So, and that's again, looking at the physical and then the emotional aspects of it. So kind of getting into your body, what are you noticing there? Are you having any pain in any specific area? Is it just that your body feels foreign? So like kind of noticing your body and then addressing that piece. And then also digging in um, and identifying like, what are you feeling? What thoughts are going through your head in this transition um, phase? Um, So that's kind of the first step. And then the second piece is really integrating mind and body and working on um, really reconnecting. And this is like, that's the big piece of like reconnecting, building back through um, your pelvic floor and doing a lot of inner core work and really kind of focusing on those sensations and getting in touch with your body again. And then through your body getting in touch with yourself again. Um, And then that last piece is really igniting uh, your passions and not losing sight of yourself because it's so easy early on, especially early on, but really through, you know, your whole postpartum and your whole, um, you know, journey into motherhood, it's very easy to lose sight of yourself and kind of then just stick to that label of, well, now I'm a mom and I I kind of have to put myself second. Um, There's so much talk in our culture of like motherhood being like a martyrdom and, and we feel that pressure. Um, and so it's kind of getting out, breaking out of those habits and really putting yourself, not necessarily first, but putting yourself at least on even playing fields and just making sure that you're, you're doing something joyful for yourself every day. And, you know, with that, not only does that, you know, better affect yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, but then also it ripples out into your family and your community. Mm-hmm. I love that. I think uh, it's so important to just keep reminding women out there that uh, you do, it's kind of like that example when you're at the, you're you're about to um, take off from the airplane, right? And they're telling you like the rules and Mm -hmm. it's telling you in case of an accident, you put the oxygen on your first and then help the others. And I think that's just um, super important to, to remember. I mean, if you're not in a really good physical or mental 
uh, health, um, you can't really help your baby or the rest of your family, right? In that way. So everybody kind of like gets affected if you don't take care of yourself first. I think that's a super important point to make. Um, I know we're talking about post-prenatal uh, care. Well, and I'm not a mom. I, I have not experienced the whole miracle of the baby. Um, but my question is, will coaching start this coaching or get uh, some sort of help before getting the baby of knowing what's going to happen? Will that help? Or is it just because it depends from case to case? Like some people might have the baby and nothing happens. Or, or what is it? So, so I think, um, again, my work right now is more after baby, but I do think that there is a lot to be said for having support beforehand. And because I feel like a good amount of what you are, what comes up is kind of what your expectations are, um, or, you know, or lack of expectations, not really knowing what to expect, not knowing that you're going to need um, a physical recovery period. Um, so I do think if you can have some support prior to, um, and again, it is going to be very individual based. Mm -hmm. So if you are, um, you know, someone who has had episodes of depression or anxiety before becoming pregnant or during your pregnancy, you want to make sure that you are talking with someone during the pregnancy period, because again, that can be kind of a, um, a indicating factor that you might be more at risk of postpartum depression after the baby's born. So, so talking through and working with someone um, on that beforehand can be very helpful. And same uh, with the physical aspect of it. If you are, um, you know, if you've had previous kids and didn't address anything um, with your recovery immediately after, and now you're pregnant again, um, or even if it's your first, um, you know, first pregnancy and you're noticing anything come up in your body where you're having a lot of like hip pain or um, low back pain and, you know, significant discomfort there, um, rather than brushing it off of like, oh, well, my body's changing. And this is just, you know, people say pregnancy is uncomfortable is actually going to um, like a women's health or a public health specialist um, with, for physical therapy prior to and seeing if you can kind of address some of the issues beforehand, um, mm -hmm. I do think can make a big difference afterwards. Um, but then once, you know, after you have the baby, and in my personal opinion, I do think that everyone <laughs> needs some support. Um, and I do think that everyone, whether you're feeling really good or not initially, you do need a healing and recovery, um, you know, period. And so getting support mm -hmm. with that is going to be, I think, hugely beneficial to you, especially if you have, you know, desires of getting back to an active lifestyle and, you know, whatever that means to you, if that means just running around, you know, wanting to run around with your kids at the playground, or it means, you know, getting back to running or, uh, you know, rigorous yoga practice or, you know, CrossFit, whatever your active lifestyle was beforehand, um, you really do want to work on reconnecting to your body. Um, you wouldn't, you know, have a, a sprain of your ankle and then go back to playing basketball in, you know, right away without having a recovery period where you're actually addressing the changes that happened. And yet we go through these huge changes where our body, you know, our ligaments adjust because of the hormones. Um, so our, you know, our bones shift a little bit, our muscles, our length tension relationships become off and not what they're used to. And yes, that's like in our pelvic area, but it, it affects our whole body. Um, and so you really need to, and this is, you know, if everything goes smoothly and there's not, you know, a cesarean section or tearing, and then you have like this actual other, you know, incision area that you have to address. Um, so I do think that getting the support and the help afterwards is going to be hugely beneficial to mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, and again, you know, whether or not you're having a diagnosis of like postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety, there it's still it's considered you know normal to go through a period of postpartum blues. But what you know, my question is always like, what does that mean exactly? Like we, it's described as like the shorter <laughs> the shorter phase in time. Um, but if it's disruptive to you and if you're not feeling good, then why like you know reach out for support? Why just sit there and stay there? You know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, such a great um, 
point to make, especially when you said, you know, like Dr. Cell, you might go through these uh, postpartum blues or whatever mm -hmm. that means. And you're like, oh, okay. So I think having that this support is like super important, you know, and, uh, and I mean, as I said, I'm not a mom, but um, I, I'm also a massage therapist and I've mm -hmm. worked with a lot of um, uh, patients out there and even just with any surgery, you have to have some sort of uh, support and care afterwards. Why yeah. we, why we're not thinking that postpartum, I know that's been your event <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying like I think that's also like a really good um point for people that are listening you know um you're having a baby it is a major thing afterwards and you should be looking for for that support and the team to help you afterwards just like when we think of a surgery you know everybody everyone thinks of a surgery and they're like oh okay I'm having you know, wrist surgery, knee surgery, whatever, you usually look for the help. Like, okay, yeah, you know, help <laughs> you should be. right. Yeah. It's just like such a normal thing. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to ask my cousin or my aunt or whatever. Oh, you know, I can't really lift my arm and whatever. And people are like very, like, they understand that. Like, I'm mm -hmm. having this surgery because I can move my arm or my knee, my back, whatever. And then you have this team of, whether it's the neighbor, the friend, the cousin, whatever, to help you afterwards. Why are we not thinking that this is the same thing? Yeah, well, I think, so I think it's for a few reasons. And, you know, one of them is that we, we say that, you know, childbirth is natural, like it's the most natural thing in the world. And yes, sure, of course it is. Um, but at the same time, and like it's natural and it's normal to have children, but at the same time, something that's, you know, normal doesn't, it doesn't mean that it still should not be addressed and that you shouldn't be cared for. Um, and that a lot of times we kind of say that something is, well, it's common and it's normal. So therefore it just is what it is, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, okay, well, this is, and this is common, but it may or may not be normal. Um, you know, depending on how you ended up having birth and what conditions, you know, happened afterwards, was there, was there tearing or was there, you know, a cesarean section or just a longer, longer delivery, um, you know, number of things that can happen. Um, mm -hmm. And that just because something is, is common or normal, again, doesn't mean that it's, it should not be addressed. Um, and while it's okay to not be okay, it's, you know, it's not okay to just be stuck there. So I feel mm -hmm. like there's, you know, a lot of expectation of like, well, this is normal and this it's kind of just how it is. Uh, and then there's that other piece of, of us just feeling like we can't necessarily ask for help. And that's where a lot of like going through some of the emotional, um, you know, addressing some of the emotional issues come up and like, why are we having such a hard time asking for help and receiving that support? Uh, and usually, you know, it can coming from a number of different reasons that you know maybe you weren't able to rely on somebody else for for help you know before and so now it feels really scary or uncomfortable like will you be able to rely on on getting help or support now um, or just that sense of like well I need to do everything myself because you know this is my baby and my birth and I got this and I'm I'm a super mom and I can do all of these things mm -hmm. that we just you know these stories that are kind of played played throughout that we get used to hearing of like yes this is normal and yes I can do it and yeah absolutely you can um but we really you know it would be very beneficial to you to have that support and guidance through it for both again the emotional piece because it is a huge huge transition you know from you know if you think about you're forming a brand new relationship with this baby it's going to change the relationship that you have with your partner if you have a partner it changes the relationship you have with yourself and really you know all your family dynamics are going to shift you know anytime there's a new relationship um mm -hmm. that develops so why do we think <laughs> once we bring this baby in that it's not going to be the case here um but yeah so there's there's that piece to it and then again you know going back to the the actual physical piece of it as well so yeah that's like really you know it blows my mind how um we think of certain things as postpartum in certain way i think uh 
the the way we we've been seeing this um event and just the uh, human history has changed so much right especially when our, our cultures i feel like uh and this is just obviously from an expectator point of view because i'm mm -hmm. you know i'm not a mom so i have I, i don't have that input to to give but i feel like um you know in the old cultures or certain cultures that still do it when uh, the mom has a baby you you have like this whole village um taking care of you and i think that's so beautiful right to have like all the women there like the the mom the and and all that i i think that looked to me very important and it seems like that was kind of like uh, i don't want to say the right way because i'm sure that's not right or wrong mm -hmm. but I, it, it looked like that was one of the nice ways to to support the mom to bring a new life in into the world right as opposed to we move forward into modern life or city life i guess and mm -hmm. it's more like woman woman strong has to be independent you got it not a big deal um that's it right yeah so I, you find these um these moms out there um needing the support but now they have these um this role as you said that they're like well you know I'm the strong independent woman that really this is nothing you know I'll have the baby and I'll go back to you know leave life but you mentioned like an amazing point here and it's like in you know once you have this new relationship in your life everything shifts and I don't think I ever saw it that way but it's so true even if you you know if you think about it as like having just a new friend how mm -hmm. that will change uh the dynamic with everybody else you know this is not a just a friend <laughs> it's your like, yeah. best friend forever so I can imagine this is this is a huge thing so so like really uh amazing points to make why do you think um people or new moms are afraid to just ask for help so well so I think it, probably a couple of different reasons I think you know you mentioned a really good point before um of you know looking back at culturally um, and in different different areas of the world how postpartum was something that was more honored and now we kind of have to create our own villages nowadays because right. logistically a lot of people don't live next to their immediate family anymore and so, some do um but so you have to kind of create your own village to a certain extent and and be okay mm -hmm. with asking for that help Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, like we do have these roadblocks up to asking help. And I think, again, some of it, it's, it's expectations. And it's also a little bit, um, you know, culturally, the expectation of our, our bounce back culture. And we can see that as like bouncing back into your physical body. You're supposed to just, you know, snap back right away. And the comments that people often make to new moms is if, if they are going to say anything, like, it's always, oh, you look great. You don't even look like you had a baby or you know, you're looking so good already, you're already losing some baby weight. And, you know, one, why, why is that the emphasis? Like you did just have a baby and you're going to look still a little bit pregnant for a few months after, <laughs> like, sorry, right. that's yeah. generally what happens for most people. I know some people it doesn't, um, you know, they, they are able to lose a little bit more weight more quickly. Um, but there's, you know, the physical aspect of bounce back culture. And then there's also the, the social aspect that again, we think that our relationship with our partner is just going to be exactly how it was. We are expected to go back to work very quickly right after and just kind of bounce back into that role and say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to add on these new responsibilities over here, but, but don't worry. I, I have that. Um, you know, I'm going to jump right back into work, whether it's six weeks after, which I can't even imagine having to do that. Um, I feel very, very fortunate that I, had the time and the flexibility to kind of pick what I wanted to do, because I know that that's not everybody's case. And that, you know, that is, you know, my privilege that I was able to sit with it and choose and decide what I wanted, um, where some people don't really have that luxury. Mm -hmm. um, but with that luxury also comes these pressures of like, well, you know, I'm feeling like I should if I want to continue and, you know, continue with my professional life and my 
you know, feeling like I'm adding value and worth to a society, we look at that as, okay, well, what are you producing and how are you, you know, contributing on your professional, you know, in your professional role? Well, if you take a step back and you say like, well, even if I'm just taking this time now to really bond and create these good relationships with my baby and, I, and I'm taking a step back from that value that I'm adding, you know, you're still adding so much value to, to our society by spending that time nurturing that baby um, and taking that extra time to create a really, you know, create that family life that you want. Um, so I, I think a lot of our, our barriers uh, come up with, you know, the expectations that we have and, and what we're hearing from society and the, the bounce back culture. And, you know, while I think there's always kind of like a good and a bad to everything, right? And why, while it's great to feel very empowered and that you can do a lot because you, you can, uh, it's, you have to still look at where you are in your phase of life and knowing, you know, it's okay to step back. Sometimes it's okay to have some rest periods. It's okay to not be always in that like go, go, go driven mode. And for me, that was a hard lesson to learn because I was very, you know, what I would consider, you know, professionally motivated and very driven. And I, I always had the goals and, and, you know, was a kind of a go, go, go person. And then to just stop and be like, okay, well, it's okay to, to still have those aspirations and maybe like put them on hold or maybe, you know, in my case, they've definitely shifted a little bit. So, but you're not going to know that unless you sit with it. Mm -hmm. And as you sit with that, and as you start to learn to be okay and be really present, and, you know, this is where a lot of, you know, the yoga pieces come in. And like, as you sit and learn with being present in the moment, honoring where you are, you'll start to become more, you know, more open to accepting and asking for help, more open to listening to what you really want, more open to allowing your body to heal so that you can get back to doing whatever you wanted to do physically. Um, mm -hmm. You know, by, by pausing and, and healing and allowing for rebuilding, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get back to those goals, but it means you're going to get back to them in a way that's more authentic to yourself. And that also is I mean, it's healthier. You know, if you push right through and you try to push into getting back into a, um, you know, I'll give two examples. If you try to push back into getting back into your professional role right away, that can leave you with some resentment, you know, whether it's you're resenting coming back to your family life or whether you're resenting the role that you're taking on. Um, if it's, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't take that time to sit, like, is this actually what I want? It can lead to that. Uh, and then the physical aspect, if you try to push too far too soon um, or too much too soon, you can end up with physical discomforts down the road or, you know, bladder leakage, you know, urinary incontinence, pelvic pain. Um, and that, again, are things that we kind of, normalize mm -hmm. and, and we don't need to normalize them they're common yes but we need to again go back and address them yeah like it doesn't have to be bad you know like right. you could really prevent a lot of things uh having that support and and I almost feel as I said as an expectator over here yeah, <laughs> yeah. that is that's still that <laughs> Your perspective is huge. It's hugely valuable, though, because thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's it's what you're noticing, and it's it's very true. And you're you're spot on with a lot of it. So. Oh, thank you. But yeah, yeah, I almost feel like we need to change the the culture when it comes to you know prenatal and postpartum care. I think uh, it's just it needs to change, like really why are we trying to be this feminist powerful thing that we are for sure but we do need that support and help to be much better you know at the end of the day it's it's for you it's for your mental health it's for your physical health it's for your baby and for all the relationships around you that are getting uh, shifted or right. slightly affected if you want to put it in that way and uh, you mentioned about moms that you know first moms but does this happen because maybe a mom had a baby 
you know, firstborn was nothing, you know, because we hear that all the time. Mm-hmm. Whether is that is true or not, I mean, as I said, I'm I have no clue. But you heard these things of like, yeah, I had my first baby, nothing happened, um, it was all great, <laughs> and you know, and now they're pregnant again and they're having a baby, and things change. Could they? Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, and it can change because again, you're adding in and get another relationship. So there's going to be all those dynamics that are going to change uh, the relationship that you had with your first and then the relationship, you know, now bringing in a second or a third or whichever. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone's experience is different. And I think there are, there are some people out there probably less than we think that have, you know, these seamless recovery times. Um, you know, both from a physical aspect and from an emotional level. Um, but I think as you layer, you know, another one on, you can, you know, just because just because your first experience was very, you know, smooth and easy does not mean that it's going to be the, the same subsequently. And also, you know, in the flip, if you had a really hard time with your first, it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the case for, you know, the subsequent ones moving forward. Every It is on a different, you know, everyone is different. Um, but as you are adding on another, it it does play into it. You know, your body had already gone through it before. And it depends, like, were you feeling good? And there was a little bit of an underlying issue of like maybe a little bit of pelvic tension that you just really weren't aware of. And now, you know, and now it becomes more of a problem um, because it wasn't addressed previously or, just how you carried this time around is different, how you deliver this, you know, every time is going to be different. Um, and again, that goes on to, you know, how long you're pushing. Did you, you know, did you have to have a C-section? Did you have any tearing? And, and the degree of all of that is going to kind of direct what kind of physical recovery you're going to have, but absolutely it can be very different one to the other. And I think for me, I think I had some of, you know, some of the doubt, some of the the beating myself up after my first, um, it definitely was more amplified with my second. Because um, with my daughter, I had you know postpartum depression, and looking back, like did I have some with my son? Maybe a little bit to a certain extent. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have the diagnosis, so I didn't have that label. Um, was it was it that? Was it just again, you know, baby blues? And mm-hmm. I don't know. It was, you know, it was a good three months before I really felt a bit better. Uh, And again, it kind of goes back to that, like what's normal, what's not, what's common versus normal and, you know, and what needs to be addressed. So you may feel like with the first, because you don't know any better of like, well, they think this is, I think this is what it's supposed to be. And so when you are like in what you think it's, you know, how it's supposed to be, you don't necessarily think about addressing it because you're just like, well, this is, I'm going to be sad for a while. I'm going to be overwhelmed. I'm going to be tired or exhausted. And, and this is just Mm -hmm. expected. And so you're kind of like, this is just what I'm going to deal with. Um, And so it's when you kind of have more awareness to that and that you can address a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And at least like be working through it um, can be very helpful. But yes, to your point, it can be very different from one to the next. Yeah. And I think uh, on those points, it's, it's okay to just ask for help, right? Either way, because, you know, they might say like, you know, I had a really good um, pregnancy the first time, now it's the second time. And she's expecting to be the same or because you already went through one thing. Now you're feeling like, oh, it, it could be about the same thing, right? Yeah. But then it turns out to not be the same thing because we already know that every baby will be different and Mm -hmm. so now you know you bring the shame and the guilt and all that Uh, but it's okay to ask for help because no situation is the same I think yeah absolutely and even if you know even if it's going according to plans or what you're expecting if it's hard and if you're feeling not great like it's still okay to ask for help then Uh, And I think, you know, one of the biggest pieces of advice, if you're planning on having a baby is to kind of, you know, we do so much work beforehand, we have all our, you know, prenatal um, visits, we 
get the nursery ready, we do the baby shower, we get all that stuff prepped, but we kind of forget ourselves in the process already. We're kind of already starting to lose ourselves in it. Um, and so I would really encourage, you know, anyone who is you know, currently pregnant or planning on it is to really consider like, what is your postpartum plan going to be? And it can be something as simple as, you know, meal prepping before so that you have stuff stashed in your freezer to make it a little bit easier. Or it can be, you know, reaching out to friends and family who are in the area and seeing like, okay, could you come over for like this amount of time? And I'm not, Kevin, I'm not saying like have everyone come over and host because that can be really overwhelming early on. But, you know, your core people who you know are going to be actually the support that you need and not expecting you to entertain and are going to, you know, embrace you in all of your, your postpartum messiness. Um, so if you have those people, you know, and you want to kind of plan out some type of schedule, especially if you have, um, you know, other children kind of figuring out, okay, well, you know, have an hour or two a week for this kid to go do something fun with another friend or family member um, to one, get them out of the house because very early on, like it's a little bit trickier. Um, so let them have fun, let them do something for themselves. And then also give you a little bit of time to kind of create that relationship with your, you know, newer baby could be very helpful. So yeah, absolutely consider your postpartum planning in your pregnancy phase. And the more you can do that, I feel like the, at least the smoother it's going to be knowing that there's going to be bumps along the road. Yeah, for sure. Super important. I mean, really, we most change this culture, you know, and bring it to like it's an amazing event and we should all have some sort of like whether it's a big team or a big village as we we're talking about or or little but still have someone to to have that support afterwards because definitely life will change you know even if yeah. it's your third kid it will be yes. different <laughs> absolutely I can't I can't speak to that at this point um but some may be like, well, third, fourth, it gets easier. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> you Maybe you, you stress less, I guess. Um, but no, absolutely. And I think to your point, you know, to start shifting a culture and to start kind of, you know, learning to honor that postpartum phase and journey more, like it starts, you have to start with yourself at home first in the ways that you can. And then from there kind of, you know, ripple out into your community and further out. Um, but mm -hmm. if you can start with yourself and get yourself the support that you need and learn to like kind of sit with where you're at, I think is going to be you know, hugely helpful for you. Uh, and then also, you know, to the point of, of getting support earlier on, um, it can also kind of help catch, you know, issues. So if you are working with someone, you have, you know, a postpartum care team, postpartum coach, um, or support that way, you can either, you know, kind of mitigate some of the the fallout um, or you can, you know, if something does arise, you can catch it earlier. Um, you know, you can catch symptoms of depression earlier to kind of then say, okay, well now, you know, what we're doing here is working really well. You know, you're, you're making progress. We're moving in a really good direction, but I'm noticing a lot of, you know, whatever it is, still here, like maybe you should, you know, go talk with somebody else, speak with with your um, doctor about additional support. Because again, a lot of times with, with normalizing things and normalizing like the baby blues and saying how common it is, the lines can get blurry. And especially if you don't know, and when, when you're in it, it can be really hard to see for yourself that, oh, okay, yes, I am experiencing you know, more anxiety or more depression and having that, that support team there to, to kind of guide you through to that next level of care that you might need um, can be really helpful because you, you don't want it to fall through the cracks. You don't want to have it, your care delayed. Mm -hmm. No, and that's such a great uh, thing to mention too, because, you know, you even just with the physical part of it, if you mm -hmm. are experiencing some sort of a uh, hip pain and things like that before you having the baby you know let's you know as we said let's not normalize let's try to see what is it try to maybe yeah I uh, kind of like fix that before you have the baby and then now you have a, a better result uh, when you're having the baby as opposed to 
normalize these symptoms or like oh it's okay I'm just pregnant and everything is supposed to hurt and whatever and so yeah. then you have the baby and now it's worse now you have a bad hip or your pelvic floor it's like way worse than what it was supposed to be so I think um having in mind those those things um will definitely help uh or I think it'll help uh the moms to be absolutely I mean you know if look at someone who is going to get their knee replaced a lot of times they have a a pre-surgery um protocol or or exercises that they want them to do because you want to get everything kind of in in the best condition possible mm -hmm. to yep. prepare for the event that's going to happen and then knowing that there's going to be a recovery phase afterwards so the same thing um if you you know again of course like caveat talk to your talk to your doctor first make sure you're cleared for exercise um but generally speaking if you were active before becoming pregnant you can for the most part continue that um, throughout your pregnancy um, if you weren't before it's a good idea to start to do some activity again with you know speaking with your doctor making sure you're cleared and okay to do that um, mm -hmm. but to prepare to keep your body strong and to you know strengthen what needs to be strengthened to help relax what needs to be relaxed and working through all of that beforehand can have a you know big impact but again knowing that afterwards as your body readjusts to everything and as your hormones continue to shift and then just the the trauma of the birth no matter you know no matter how you're birthing your baby there's going to be some trauma there normal or not right um yeah. it's a traumatic event so there is going to be a recovery phase that needs to happen as well yeah for sure and uh it brings me to think about also i know you know we're talking about the mom and it's the postpartum um side of it how about the dad? I know he's not going. Uh, no. through, <laughs> I know he's not going through the physical things that the mom are going. But is there? I mean, as I as I said, I don't know anything about this whole thing, right? Because I have not experienced it. But does the dad also? Um, is it helpful for the dad or the partner to? have this some sort of like coaching and preparedness to you know receive this kid <laughs> yeah so i think um two things a few things with that is that yeah absolutely um it's a so it's a huge transition for the mom because of everything that happens physically um you know emotionally hormonally it also does affect the dad too and their you know postpartum depression can happen in fathers as well um, the, you know, the rate is not nearly as, as high, but it is something that can happen. And they are also adjusting to a new role and a new relationship. And also, again, speaking to, you know, the relationship changing is that the relationship that you guys have together has changed, you know, and I think that a lot of times they're not prepared for that. So I do think, you know, again, it's going to be kind of an individual case by case basis. I don't generally work with the fathers, but it can be helpful to, especially if they're noticing any signs of, you know, depression or anxiety that are coming up with it, that they also seek help. And whether that's in a joint situation mm -hmm. where, you know, you guys are going to kind of like a, a partner counseling, or if they're, you guys are each doing it on your own. Um, but I think one of the things that can be very helpful is, is just really keeping that communication open and knowing that that your relationship is going to change uh, and being having that communication really be open and talking through what each person is experiencing individually and then how it's affecting each other but yeah, yeah. you bring up a good point it definitely you know we we do kind of tend to forget them and early on when you're you know, when you're going through your own postpartum recovery, you know, for me personally, I had, you know, depression and also some rage and it, a lot of it was taken out on my, my husband because when he, he was there, right. Um, but it, the last thing that you're going to be thinking of is how it's affecting them as well, because you're clearly and rightly so kind of focused on yourself. Um, but when you're, when you start to address your own issues and what you're going through and the emotions that you're feeling 
it in turn, again, those ripple effects out, not only does it have really beneficial impacts on your baby, um, but, it, but on the partnership as well. Um, and it really, you know, it, it only takes one to kind of have everything crumble and it really only takes one to, to be fully committed um, to keeping things really well connected. Um, and so it's going to be, you know, you doing the work personally, as you're doing the work on yourself and starting to be in a better state and a more observant and more aware state, you can also be a little bit more aware of, of what's going on with your partner as well. And, and you know, having open communication and, and talking through and catching, like, if you're noticing anything that, okay, he is really struggling and not only do I need to get care, but now he should seek some care as well. Yeah. And I think it goes back to also the roles, right? The man mm -hmm. is supposed to be strong and you're good and get to help out and all these things. And I think uh, that also uh, might need to shift a little bit in and rethink uh, what's happening. You know, they are going through a change too, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. There, you know, there's going to be a, a different relationship now. <laughs> you guys got a best friend for life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So things need to adjust. And I think it's it's just good to know that, you know, things happen to the dad too, and it's okay too. And he might need also assistance too in the process of the baby and pretty much get having assistance. And I felt like having that team and coaching uh, is just for the better of everything. Yeah. It's not like... It, you know, it's nothing to it uh, than that. It's just you want a good outcome with the mom and the baby. And you also want a good outcome with the dad and the mom and the baby. So right. why not, right? Why uh, have that taboo of like, no, I'm fine. I don't need anything. Or like, you know, something like that. When it really could be like, no, I do need help. I feel left out or uh -huh. whatever it is that they're feeling. And um, address that and build a better relationship with the mom and the baby. So I think it's, uh, you know, that's good to know that that's also uh, my experience these things. And just the change itself, uh, I mean, I cannot even imagine just to be like, oh, you know, she has a baby. What, what do I do with this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't always, I mean, again, we think that it's going to come so naturally that because it's a natural thing. Um, but then when you have this brand new baby and you're like, all right, how do, how do I hold them? How do I do, you know, all of this stuff. And, you know, they're not as fragile as they look and they're a little more malleable than you think. And, and they're going to be okay in, in that regard. But it is kind of common, you know, some dads do really get very nervous holding the baby initially and because they, do, they don't know what to do. Um, so kind of working through that and talking um, through that, but, at, you know, to your point, again, of having the coaching and, and with really working on yourself and having it ripple out to, you know, the baby and your partner, because, you know, most people you go into this to build a family, to build a family and a life together. And you're thinking, you know, you, your partner and your baby and, or babies, and it, there's so much stress and change that can happen. And there's so much kind of like push to get things back to normal that it can create a lot of tension. And if you're not willing to like sit with that and work through it and see where things are coming up and get yourself, you know, in a, in a better place, it can lead to, you know, a lot of things falling apart, whether it's, you know, again, yourself, you know, physically, emotionally feeling like you're falling apart or then having your relationships, you know, specifically with your partner kind of falling apart early on because there is so much change, you know, mm -hmm. so knowing that a lot of the change is temporary, but that there's also not going to be this going back to normal yeah. phase because it's not <laughs> you know it's changed permanently um but that doesn't mean that it's changed in a bad way but it does mean that you're going to have to again like sit with it and and come to terms with that life has changed a little bit um and the more open that you can be with your partner about that the better yeah no for sure um great point right there and i think uh uh, just to have the whole dad and mom um, in it to win this <laughs> is, yeah. is, is the key for it. 
but yeah oh my god this has been like an amazing conversation thank you for all the insights and the information uh, uh is there something else that you would like to say before we go yeah just um if you don't mind if i you know share my coaching program with your with your audience your listeners that i would love to do that that i you know I'm developing, developed the eight week program, the postpartum revolution to really help new moms, you know, reconnect with themselves, get back in touch with their mind, body, and soul and addressing both, you know, the physical and the emotional aspects of the postpartum recovery. Um, so I would love to, you know, provide that to your listeners. I think you'll have the link in the show notes that they can reach out um, and get more information on that. And then, of course, that they can always find me on Instagram at Ariel Martone um, if they want to find more information out there as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. I will put all your information on the show notes for everybody that um, is either pregnant, looking to get pregnant, or know someone that is pregnant and might you know, benefit from all this information out there. Remember, it's not only the mom, it's the dad and the whole team <laughs> around the mom. So thank yeah. you, thank you for all the information. I will put your uh, all your links and everything on the show notes for everybody to uh, check it out. And uh, if you know any, if you need to know any more about my show, you can always find me at alexbalga.com. You can look me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everyone, everywhere out there. And also remember my book is out. So you can buy it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's called Parents Are Greatest Teachers. So Thank you everyone for being here today. This was an amazing conversation and eye-opening even from an expectator point of view. So it's great information. Hope, hopefully everyone um, got something out of this. Uh, if you need to reach me and uh, or send me a DM, me, please do so on social media so we can keep talking about this topic or any other uh, that you might have a question. Thank you uh, for being here today and thank you everyone for listening. Everyone have a blessed day. Bye. Thanks, Alex.